What's up guys, it's me here, the Midwest Fish Keeper, bringing you guys a one month content update of the saltwater tank. Here's a Tiger Watchman Gobi, and after this clip, I'm going to pull up some two pictures, because it said in the fish story this was a Randall's Gobi, and I thought that too, which is one that pairs up with a shrimp, but actually it's not. It's a Tiger Watchman Gobi, which they're sand sifters, and they get five inches, and they don't pair up with a shrimp, and I'll pull up both of the pictures right now because they look very similar and that's why i got them confused you see now here's a difference there's literally no difference they look exactly the same so i got them confused and i didn't really know what a tiger watchman goby was anyways but at least he's a sand sifter and he'll keep my sand clean well then after i put him inside the tank to get ready to the temperature uh i did start a suction and did a drip acclimate on him for a little bit to make sure the salinities the ph and everything's pretty much the same so when it gets introduced into the tank there's less stress i ended up getting a bunch of salt water in my mouth and that wasn't very pleasant either here's the goby again again it looks really cool but you can see how easily i got him mistaken and he was very healthy and it was about to the fish store was about to close and i asked to get him and he'd tear down the whole tank just to get it. he's like you're sarcastically you're my favorite uh closing customer <laughs> so it was really funny and the fish was really healthy and he was eating and he's been in that tank for a very long time so he's used to captivity and so it was a good choice finally i found my tripod after a year i'm able now to make some cool camera angles so here's a cool one of me putting my nets in the tank and netting out the goby and i accidentally put some water from the bag which that's really <laughs> that disappointed me I almost spilt the bag inside the tank so what was the point of even having the net in the bag anyways yeah, so here's me uh, taking the goby out with the net. I was struggling hardcore because, of course, the bag's too small for the net. <sighs> me struggling, I finally got the goby to get inside the net, and I got to put him inside my quarantine tank. Here's him inside the tank after a while, and he's eating mice just like a champ. After this, I'll have some mice feeding videos of him because he eats it like crazy. Now, if you just thought I was getting a fish, I tricked you because I have I got two new corals. I have a Duncan and Zoanthid that I already have in the tank, but I need two new more just to like bring some extra life. So I have a hammer coral, it looks more like a frog spawn, and I have this cool these two mushroom polyps that are bright green. Now, here they are inside the bucket. I'm just acclimating them. And there's something weird, all right? On the mushroom coral, there's some weird, like, worms and stuff crawling around. So, thank God I have some coral X. I'm going to go dip this coral and the hammer to make sure all the bugs are off. So, here's me with my coral RX. And I have two capfuls in there because it's a quarter of a gallon of water that I have inside this, like, little bowl. And I have a white bowl to make sure I can see all the pests and make sure that I can totally spot clean stuff that looks kind of sketchy. So now the Coral RX, I'm mixing with the turkey baster in the water to make sure everything is dissolved. Now, all of a sudden just started something crawling out of the mushroom. I was like, ew, the disgusting worm. So, you know, I started shooting it with the turkey baster and it ended up being a brittle starfish that came out. Yeah, and I decided to open up the rock. I was like, I was like, oh, it's a starfish. So I quickly grabbed my net and I scooped it up and put it in the bucket to make sure I didn't kill the um, starfish or injure it by any ways. Because like, I've always wanted the brittle starfish or starfish in my tank, and I finally found one on a coral. So I didn't have to pay fifteen dollars for a starfish, which was nice. Finished dipping my corals for eight minutes. I decided to go back to my starfish. Had my dad film me, you know pick the starfish up put inside the tank i looked it up first to see go. to make sure uh yeah. nothing bad about the starfishes or if it's anything bad or hurt the tank or its inhabitants so i did my um i didn't really know if it was poisonous so i just kind of netted it put it inside the tank and it kind of looks funny and i just put it right inside a rock crevice and it slid right in 
Yeah, I don't know what this weird white stuff is. I think it might be defense mechanism. But then it's kind of crawled in, and I haven't seen it since. The rock. Well, never to be seen again. Now, here's me placing all the coral, and my two corals inside the tank. Um, it's a lot more blue and less bright than this, but I had to turn it all the way up because for some reason, my camera does not pick up blue. And I feel like it's a mini struggle for uh, many reefers to have this blue lighting as you can't get good footage. So here's me placing my hammer coral first. It took me a while to figure out where to put it or like get in a nice snug spot. I need to get some like gel uh, super glue to put it right in the place because it keeps falling over and it's really annoying. But eventually I did find a spot and that's where it's gonna be now, I think, because it looks really cool. So I'd put my mushroom coral in a spot underneath the power head because it's low flow and it's got moderate lighting. And it looks pretty cool. And I swear there's Aptasia on there. But, and I ended up taking a, like a, a screwdriver and chipping off the rock. And I ended up uh, breaking half of the rock, which is where the foot of one of the mushrooms are. So it's kind of stressed out, which is my bad. And then I looked up even closer, and there is no Aptasia. It was a, it was a feather duster, which I looked up online. And I went through all that work, and I, I cracked the rock just to find out that it was an Aptasia, and it was actually a feather duster worm, but it's better to be safe than sorry.